if you want to find the right girlfriend, life partner or wife, you have to understand that it's all about perspective. And what better place to shoot a video about perspective than here in Barcelona? You want one woman. You don't necessarily want to be dating a bunch of different women. You don't want to have intimacy with a variety of different people. You want one person that you can build a life with that you can have a family with, that you can settle down with. That's what you truly want. You want the depth and the connection. You know that feeling that you're longing for, that emotional intimacy? Yeah, physical intimacy really matters, spiritual intimacy matters, but that emotional connection, that's what you truly want. But what you have to understand is, if you truly want to have an amazing relationship, and we're talking about an outstanding relationship, not just some mediocre relationship that most people settle for, that most people stumble into, some four or five out of 10 level compatibility, 15 out of 30 level compatibility, but something amazing, somebody who, she doesn't have to be a top model, but she has to be physically attractive, same value, somebody who's open-minded, you can travel with, you know, somebody that you're really aligned with, then you have to create options first. And in order to create options first, you have to temporarily fall in love with the process, with the process of meeting women online or in real life. And I know you have a lot of internal objections probably towards that. Be them conscious or unconscious because if you didn't have them, you'd have the result. In life, you can either only have blind spots or the result. If you didn't have any blind spots, you would already have the result because this is something that you've wanted for a couple of months, perhaps a couple of years. And if there's something that you desire, a competent man that you are and you don't have it, then it must be because you have blind spots. And I want to address some of them here today. One of them is that the process of meeting women We're here in Barcelona, doing an in-person event with clients, they're absolutely crushing it and killing it. The process of meeting them in person is actually quite a beautiful process. And it is something that you have to temporarily fall in love with. Now, you might not necessarily be the kind of guy who says, oh, I don't want to run around cold approaching hundreds of women. Fair enough. You don't have to be doing a crazy amount. But as a man, I believe you actually have to want to have the skill set of being able to create relationships out of nothingness. It's one of the most beautiful things. And there's a big difference between me and some of those pickup artists because those guys... And I'm not here to talk bad about any particular individual. I want to talk bad about the idea, right? And there's a nuance to it, of course. But I'm not interested in talking bad about people. That's one thing that's gone wrong in society. We have to learn to separate ideas from people. But what they do is they glorify intimacy with as many women as possible. For me and for you, that's just a stepping stone. It's a necessary stepping stone to create a sufficient amount of options for yourself. And so it's going to create a degree of confidence that you can't even begin to imagine yet. You probably want children, okay? If you already have children, there's a high chance you have at least one son. And if you want children, there's a fairly high chance that you're gonna have a son. And don't you, in the future, want to be able to teach your son something about dating and relationships? I mean, you probably never had a strong role model in this area. Maybe your father was a great role model, maybe he wasn't. My father is an amazing role model in a lot of ways, but not in this particular area. My father is probably one of the most intelligent people that I know. Extraordinarily smart. There's not a lot of people who can make me feel like I should be working at McDonald's. And no disrespect to people who work at McDonald's, but it's quite something. Yet, at the same time, even though he has an insane degree of measurable IQ probably, reasoning abilities, acumen, like the ability to think yourself into new contexts quickly. He works in the medical field in Germany. He wasn't able to figure this dating and relationship thing out. Him and my mother, they had a really bad relationship for a lot of it, the time. It wasn't crazy drama, they were still respectful towards each other most of the time, but their way of dealing with things was avoidance. They just weren't compatible. Or they had, obviously, it's not black and white, right? It's not an off and on switch. But they weren't as compatible as they would have had to be for the relationship to last potentially a lifetime because they never screened for it. They stumbled into it because my father had a best friend, my uncle, not my real uncle, but his, my godfather now, and my mother had a best friend. So my mother's best friend and my uncle's best friend, they knew each other, so they introduced my mom and my father. And meeting people in a social circle like that can work. But how many people do you actually know who stumbled upon each other without making a 
choice to create options for themselves, who are now in a relationship where they're not just together, because just being together can't possibly be the ultimate parameter of success in a relationship, but who are actually genuinely happy, where they respect each other, they're a team, no matter where they are, she respects him, she never disrespects him in public, she's really loyal, he treats her amazingly well, they have amazing intimacy, emotionally, physically, and spiritually, 10, 20, 30, 50 years into the relationship. How many people do you know that have that, that just stumbled into that? Does it exist? Of course, outliers always exist, but that is not the rule. If you wanna, maybe you work for a tech company, perhaps you have your own business, if you wanna, get the best deal possible, if you want to get the best job possible, but you only have one recruiter in your LinkedIn inbox, or you only have one real estate deal available, well, the probability that you're, going to, that you're going to negotiate hard, if your best alternative to negotiated agreement, your BATNA, is poor or non-existent, is very, very low. And what happens, what's going to happen to you, and what's, what happened to me in the relationship with my ex-wife is, you're not going to communicate your needs because you're afraid that if you were to communicate your need for variety, respect, autonomy, intimacy, that that would create conflict. And when there's conflict, we don't feel connected. Perhaps you're even afraid of the relationship breaking entirely as a result of that conflict. And the ultimate, there's a variety of different reasons for that. I mean, if you're already in a relationship, then you don't have to go and meet a bunch of different women. Now, you can just psychologically create that certainty from within, fine, fair enough. But since you're watching this, I assume you're single and you want to find somebody. So you might as well go ahead and experience factual abundance. Coming back to the very first point that I was making, you have to learn to fall in love with the process. Because if you don't learn to love the process, you won't be able to perform optimally with every single interaction. In business, you can be a little bit paranoid, always focusing on what could go wrong. You can be a little bit grumpy. I don't know, you work in front of a computer, doing administrative tasks, coding, whatever it is, and you can still get the result. In social interactions, it just doesn't work like that. The unfortunate thing is, you want that intimacy, you want that one person to be with, but to get there, you actually have to fall in love with what you don't want to do. What you don't want to do is meet a lot of different women. That doesn't mean that you have to get really intimate with a lot of them, but imagine it like a funnel. You have to have a funnel of a lot of inbound leads, so to speak, and then you have to qualify hard. Most people, their funnel looks like a straight line. Whatever comes in, they take, okay, there's one woman, they immediately commit to her. They say, I love you way too soon. They become exclusive way too fast. And by the way, one of the reasons that I say that you should take two to three months, six to 12 weeks, somewhere along those lines, before you make it exclusive, is that if you don't wait to make it exclusive, if you make it exclusive within a week or two or three, you never give her a chance to earn you. And it sounds a little bit weird or manipulative or like a tactic, it's really not the case, and I'll give you an example in a minute. But if you never give her the chance to invest, to earn you, then she will never feel like she won you over. And for the rest of your life, for the rest of the relationship, she may feel like she settled or at least she won't appreciate you as much. You know that there's friends that you've tried to help, that you've tried to give advice for free, right? Given advice, uh, that you've tried to move forward, help them with their goals. But since they didn't invest, since they didn't have to invest to get the advice, they never really fully appreciated it. And since they never fully invested it, since they never fully appreciated it, did they act on the advice or not? No, probably unlikely. Now, there are some people, obviously, who you give advice to who really appreciate it, but it's usually one out of a hundred. Even with the free advice that I'm putting out here, one out of a hundred, on average, is my guess, actually takes the free advice into practice. Obviously, we have a coaching program that's amazing. Apply for a free initial consultation call if you want my help with that personally. But if you actually were to put all of the free advice in the 2,000 short form videos, in the countless hours of long form videos that we have here on YouTube, in practice, you would get very, very far. Is it gonna replace actual coaching where you can communicate, where you can resolve your individual blind spots? Not, but it gets you really, really far. But you haven't invested in watching this YouTube video. The only investment you've made is your time. That's why you're not taking it as serious. I could give you right now, this is the crazy thing, and this is really true if you know it in other areas. I could give you all of the most advanced strategies that I teach my clients in my coaching program. And you wouldn't put half of them into practice because you didn't invest. That's how crazy it is. 
It's exactly the same thing in the beginning of the relationship. If you don't wait a little bit, not holding out, not stringing her along, not pretending that there's going to be a future if there is none, but genuinely just evaluating whether you're right for each other or not, which is a common sense thing to do because you're going to discover something in week seven that you won't discover in week one, then you won't give her a chance to invest. She'll never feel like she had to win you over. And when you feel like you've won somebody, you will appreciate that person so much more. Now, this doesn't stop. When you go into the relationship, this, it's called buyer-seller dynamic, has to be continued to pay attention to. And you have to pay attention to that. And one of the ways to get people to invest in you is to set boundaries. Because when you set boundaries, you give the other person a chance to step into constructive conflict with you. She'll realize that you're a man who respects himself. And remember, she's always going to map your current behavior towards future behavior. If you don't stand up in the face of a congruence test, that she may be presenting you with, that other people may be presenting you with, where if it's other people's not congruent sets, it's just simply disrespect, then how on earth or why on earth should she have faith that you'll be able to protect the family at some point down the line if challenges arise? If there's going to be external threats that'll try to attack your family, you have to be a man who's willing to step into constructive conflict in a gentle yet firm way. If you want her to respect you, obviously that will go a lot deeper. But coming back to the original point, if you want to find an amazing girlfriend, life partner, wife, not just an average one, you're an achiever, right? You're intelligent, you're already doing well in a lot of areas, you just want this last missing piece of the puzzle. If that's what you truly want, you need a lot of options for yourself, right? You want this funnel that goes like this. Disqualify at different stages. Okay, the initial approach, be that online or in real life. Okay, then texting. Oh, maybe she's not quite into me. Well, first thing is you look at a profile, right? On dating apps, Tinder, Hinge, and Bumble, or in person. You see the vibe, you see if you're aligned on values, okay? Then text, then you meet for a date, and then you meet for a couple of dates. And then you give her the chance to apply for the position of the girlfriend, wife, or life partner. Most men see a beautiful woman and they think to themselves, she's so beautiful, I hope I like her. Oh, no, <laughs> that's the other way around, actually. That's what you should be thinking. Most men see a beautiful woman, they say, wow, she's beautiful, I hope she likes me. I hope she's going to give me the time of day. But what you should be thinking is exactly what I said. I'm going to go completely that up, which is, she's so beautiful, I hope I like her. She's so beautiful, I hope we're aligned on our values. She's really attractive, let's see if this may make sense. Let's see if there's a future together. Come from a curious frame. And here's something really interesting that I was talking to the clients the other day. Another one of the blind spots or internal points of resistance that you might have is rejection. We don't like getting rejected. That uh, discomfort of putting yourself out there and leaving your comfort zone partially comes from not wanting to get rejected because we face the ultimate fear, which is, oh, what if I'm not enough and then I won't be loved? Because if I get rejected by this one woman, this evidently means that I'm not lovable at all, right? No, it doesn't mean that at all, because if you were to do the approach the right way, not the wrong way, but the right way 10, 20 times, you're gonna get significant results. But what if a woman were to reject you and you actually come from a place of compassion? And I genuinely mean that, because most men, when they get rejected, they look up to her, oh, she's here, I'm here, she rejected me. She's not giving me the time of day. I have to qualify myself to her because I've placed her on that pedestal, right? So the other frame of mind is to come from a place of compassion. And the easiest way to do that is to go to a gay club, right? If you go to a gay club as a man, you're going to get hit on by some who are awesome and super nice and respectful and some who are very forward and it's going to make you uncomfortable. And it's, I know it's a bit of a silly example. Also, it's really good if you want to boost your self-esteem. If you're ever having a low day, go to a gay club. Even if you're not gay, you might see this as a silly idea. It's a bit of a joke, right? I mean it in a 80% joking way, but you can actually try it out. It's actually going to work. You go there, and it's going to boost your self-esteem because you're going to get so many compliments, and you'll experience what it's like to be a woman if you dress up well, obviously. Then you take care of your appearance. So some are going to approach you. They'll be really interested. It actually happened to me a couple of, a week or two ago in Dublin. I was sitting at a burrito place, and this guy comes and I was wearing what I thought was a really cool coat. If you've ever seen Money Heist, Berlin, he has a coat, so I literally Googled Berlin coat, and I was wearing a coat that looks like this. So I thought, I'm looking there, sitting all swag, and then this gay man obviously comes up and he says, are you a homosexual? I said, no, 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 bro, thank you so much. He says, are you sure? Trying to convince me. I was like, oh, I appreciate the persistence, bro. Thank you so much. Call him bro, so he knows what's up. Thank you so much. And then his friends kept calling him, because apparently he's done this stunt a couple of times, this stunt he approached. And I thought, who am I to judge that, right? Who am I to judge that? And he did it in actually in a really nice way. So I said, no, thank you. He insisted one more time. I was like, no, 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 thank you so much. And then he just moved on. But if you go to a gay club, for example, some guys are going to make you really uncomfortable. Maybe you've had that with women that you're not particularly interested in, who are moving forward, who are just displaying their interest and their intentions towards you in a bit of a pushy manner. 
And once you've experienced that, it actually becomes a lot easier to feel compassion because, oh, maybe she genuinely was just uncomfortable. Now, remember, there's only ever two reasons for a rejection. One, a lack of compatibility, you're not right for each other, which includes a lack of desire on her part, which means maybe she's just not interested in you. Or, on the other hand, you made mistakes in your communication. And that's something you can control. This component you can't control. This one, you absolutely can. As a skill set, you got to work on that. We're on clients. We're with clients here in Barcelona, killing it. But again, most of the stuff we do is online because it's not necessary to do in-person events. But every now and then, it's really amazing and it's a lot of fun, right? So you can work on that by yourself. You can take it to the next level. You can get coaching. But this is something that you can and absolutely should control. But this is something that you can just stoically accept. Not stoically from a resignated, oh, okay, there's another one. Got to do another approach on Tinder, Hinge, Bumble, Match. Or perhaps in real life, another one. No. Success is the ability to go from failure to failure without the loss of enthusiasm. And nowhere is this as accurate as in this particular context. Because if you go from approach to approach, and you're almost like prepping yourself. I've seen it with clients over the years so many times that they're going in, they're expecting pain. And if you've gotten rejected five, six times in a row, I get it, I understand it. If you don't have the right mindset, if you don't have the right techniques and processes to deal with it, you're going in there and you're expecting pain. Well, if you're going in there with the expectation of pain, most likely it's gonna go Now, can you have sometimes amazing interactions after you actually expect pain? Fine, but you almost have to assume a degree of success. You have to go in there with a degree of comfort. You have to preload comfort. You have to walk in there as if you've already known each other. So that's really, really important. But so when I say stoically accept a degree of inevitable rejection, it doesn't come from a, oh yeah, life is terrible. It's just like, okay, that's a fact of life. It's awesome. Let's play this game. I'm only X amount of rejections away from an amazing relationship. What if I told you that you were 467 rejections away from finding your dream woman? What if I were to hold a gun to your mother's head, your child's head, your best friend's head, your sister's head, and I said, if you don't find an amazing woman, you don't find a way to do 460 approaches online and in person together somehow to find that amazing woman in the next three to 12 months, wouldn't you find a way to do it? Evidently you can. So you're absolutely able to do that. But you have to understand that to get the outcome, the intimacy, the connection with a woman who's truly loyal, who's, and these amazing women actually exist, you need to temporarily fall in love with the process. That doesn't mean that you always have to love it. That is, I don't always love going to the gym either, but I'd rather not be a complete I currently have five or six kilos of body fat too much. That's fine. But there's a degree of aesthetics that I expect of myself. Right, we're here in Barcelona, I'm doing 15, 20,000 steps a day. So, we're working on it. There are plenty of times where I don't want to go to the gym. But just because I feel certain emotions, just because I feel a degree of discomfort towards the idea of getting rejected, just because I feel a degree of discomfort when it comes to going to the gym, that does not going to stop me from doing what's right. So the question that I have for you is, do you want to do what's easy or do you want to do, or do you want to do what's right? Wish you all the best. Take care.